Hey, good morning, FCF. We're starting on a new series. We'll take a six-day journey. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of one week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of another week. And we're going to look at a subject that uh, someone has called, it's like doing squats when it comes to relational uh, interactions. It's, it's about listening. Um, much easier to talk than it is to listen. In fact, to start us off on this, let me read a verse to you from James chapter 1, verse 19. James says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So, quick to listen, slow to speak. Um, probably some of us find that uh, a little bit on the hard side, that it's um, easier to speak. We tend to speak quicker than we do listening. Listening takes an awful lot of concentration. More importantly, it takes uh, our willingness to kind of uh, objectify or silence our own feelings instead of um, hearing everything thing through our personal desires, perspectives, outlook. Um, it, it's not an easy thing to listen, or, or let me say it this way, it's not an easy thing to listen well. Now, most of all, we need to learn to listen well to, to God. So to get us started in this journey of six days, let me read to you from the book of Deuteronomy. The Israelites, they had come out of Egypt. They had wandered around in the wilderness for uh, 40 years because of their refusal to trust God and to go into the promised land when he first got them to the border some 12, 13 months having left Egypt. But now they're ready. The next generation is ready to go in to take the promised land. And so Deuteronomy is a review. Moses is going back over the covenant that God made with them so that the next generation would be ready to be faithful to God. So anyway, here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and then we'll jump to verse 6. Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that, they, so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. By the way, that, that little um, comment there, don't add to God's word, don't take away from God's word. We have that exact same warning given in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 22. Let me read to you verse 6. So God urges them to... Uh, to, you know, hear, to listen to his decrees and his laws that he was about to teach them. Then let me pick up in verse 6. Observe them carefully. The idea of listening is so that you can uh, objectively take them in, internalize them. Observe them carefully. Why? For this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely... This is a great nation, or this great nation is a wise and an understanding people. Um, so here we find an interesting insight right from the start. So God starts this process of revealing himself in written form to the nation of Israel. It all starts with Moses, okay? He is given the instructions to take revelation from God, write it down so that it can be preserved and passed on. And he tells the Israelites, you are to be living illustrations of my word. Part of the covenant or the agreement with them is that God would bless them in all kinds of ways, mostly physically, if they represented him accurately. In other words, if they listened to his word and lived in accord with it, because then they would be displaying the truth about God, his true character to the rest of the nations. But if they were disobedient and, and did not listen to his word, well, then they were giving a distorted image of God to the nations. And so God set it up in the covenant, in the agreement, that he would um, have various punishments for them, you know, so that they could have warnings, they could awaken, and they could turn around. This didn't mean that they, they were, um, you know, lost or anything like that. It just meant that, you know, God could not favor them if they were giving a distorted image of him to the nations. But the important thing for us to take in here is that God was really concerned then, is concerned now, that we listen to His Word, that we take it in, that we study it objectively, that we don't go into His Word subjectively looking for the things that we want or applying the 
uh, interpretations that we want due to some desire we have in our life. They were to take the decrees, take the laws, they were to listen to them, they were to internalize them, then they were to live them out obediently so that other people could be influenced by them. They, they would see the wisdom, it said, of this God of Israel's and the wisdom of this people. Listen, I've said this before, if there were no heaven or no hell, living as a follower of Christ would still be the most intelligent, beneficial way that a human being could ever live. It's simply living according to the design of our being. So here we start out on this path of listening. We first need to be those that listen to God. If we don't listen to Him, we're not going to do well listening to others, that's for sure. So thank you for starting this journey with me this week. Oh,